Welcome everybody to uh, Tem Team May Edition Cup here. Uh, we got a little bit surprised here that um, two one of the players couldn't do a certain time slot here, so they decided to do a little bit earlier. So we are now here to casting this match now between uh, Luke Leal and uh, Set Set Ah words Sorry. <laughs> and today I'm I'm having Jab here with me. Yes, it, I'm here again. It is the fantastic duo of Janton and me again. And I swear to God, every time you're doing this opening, it gets smoother and smoother, Janton. Yes, I, I hopefully I'm hopefully nailing it one day. I think next match it's gonna be Tem, uh, or it's gonna be Team Cup Tem, um, <laughs> probably. Uh, anyways, we're here for uh, for one of our final matches. Uh, there's two matches left, if I recall correctly. Both have Luke Leal, and like you mentioned, it is be or it is uh, it, it's rescheduled. Luke Leal versus Setsuna has been rescheduled too. Well, now, so we're all online a little bit earlier. Um, it, and it's I, looking to be. And they are already game. in, actually. Well, let's get into the game then. As um, I haven't spectated either of them this week yet. Uh, and both are bringing some some heat. Luke Liu bringing Zaubian Rolder, uh, Setsuna bringing uh, bringing the uh, right net as well. Uh, has a little bit more of a, a standard team here. Has the Naga. Has the the Volorant. Volorant. We haven't seen a lot of Volorant, but it, it's exciting to see at least. Uh, there's the Tilken. So uh, yeah, both sides have some some good stuff. Uh, Setsuna banning, first banning the, the Calibis actually, and I mean, it's pretty obvious as to why it's banned, right? I, yeah, definitely, like, you, you've seen the, the Nagais and you, wa you want to make sure that Nagais doesn't take too much damage out of a Calibis, and Calibis is, is fairly slow attempt, so you can counter it really well. Yeah, so um, the, the Naga also goes away now, uh, Calibis being thrown out means that, well, Naga would have been pretty safe. But that leaves that Mashuk open, and Mashuk has been a, quite a menace lately. Um, it, it's always been good, of course, because of Parrier, and it's just hard to deal with. But recently, with the tireless buff, it's just been... Uh, it, it's gotten a new uh, a new form. It's going all-out aggro, or can go all-out aggro. We we're not sure yet, because, well, Parrier is still a really good trade. It can still go full defense. But... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what it is. If it is that Parrier, then Firecoish won't be the best against it. Uh, Luke Little does decide to pick up that Firecoish. Uh, it is a solid Temtem still. I see some cool combos as well there. There is the uh, Firecoish plus Hagine combo for Synergy Master Hellfire. Uh, but there's also the Skunch uh, and Rolder. Both are fine uh, because they give the cats a synergy out. Yeah, and I just liking it, the Hedgen and the Firecoys uh, pairing up here. With, you're doing so much damage with uh, the Hellfire. It's just like, it's really insane here. But like, I'm thinking here that, I mean, you kind of want to have some of some sort of a uh, Quetzal combo here, which we do see that the that, uh, Skunch is being brought up here. Just no matter what, so now Satuna is picking up on the other slots, just being able to put in pressure on either of the Tam, but Koji is being threaded by the Mushoke, and we do see the Satuna is picking up as well, the Kino. Yeah, but if this Mushuk is indeed that parrier, then what will Luke Liu do against that? It's gonna be a plus one, plus one Mushuk here, and that's too heavy physical Tam Tam against something that might be able to eat every single physical move, and then clap back with a Wastewater onto the Koji. Yeah, that is a really good question. Not not gonna lie, that we do see that Luke actually decided to banning the Tolkien here. I, I mean, I'm pretty fair because I'm thinking that Luke will not be able to use it in Nidrasil at one point just to be hunting out. Yeah, and it's not just that; it's just having the agency to swap it in and getting that heater off to get that uh, that really good damage reduction is solid. Uh, Zaobian gets banned on the other side. Just a Temptum with excellent coverage and having stab on all of them is just really good um it, it has some lackluster stuff but that's okay uh, it gets banned out it's strong and setsuna and luke Liu are just speeding through this pig van phase as yowler uh, volorant and reignet get picked up really excited to see the reignet again uh it's i think it's been it, from what i've seen it's been doing quite 
well. Uh, Axolotus had it, of course, and in the games where he picked it, it, it did quite well as well. So I'm happy to see that. I uh, The Volorant got picked up. Uh, Volorant has fallen a little bit out of favor, but it's still the same monstrosity as it was before. It just has a lot more counters now, but actual stuff that threatens it out. And local league here decided to picking up the Nidrasil in the end here. Let's dive in directly into first match out of these two between Luke Lille and Setsuna. Yeah, and there we have it, the Kinu Protector buff onto that uh onto that Mashuk. Skunch wearing the chamomile, like I don't know if that is very standard, but it's it's a good item on Skunch nonetheless. Uh, okay. But yeah, we'll have to wait if we, if we can spot if this is a tireless or a parrier Mashuk, because that's going to be really relevant. Uh, because the only special Temtem that Luke has on his team is that Hagein. Uh, and... Well, Setsuna swaps in the Ragnat here, um, hoping to probably take something. Ketsa comes out, it will be onto that Ragnat slot, and that's almost 50%. Wastewater comes down, Koish, 60%, and a turn of Toxic. And it is the Parrier Mashuk actually, but PJAB is pretty solid here because it lowers that defense. It's double screen Parrier, so that is quite tanky. Yeah, the, the more uh, standard classic Mashuk where you're having Parrier and the double screen here. And also Gunch, I think normally you're either having um, Resistance Badge or mo mo the most common would be having the Drum War because you want to always try to pair up with, like, if, for example, the Fire Coins to try to maximize the damage. Now that you, now that I think about it, you're right, and uh, war drums are actually not on Koish either, which is a temptum you see it on often as well. But it is that fire chip on Koish. We could so, potentially see that on roll they're having it as well, or Nidrasil, but Nidrasil normally running with like uh, energy drink or pillow. Yeah, exactly. So it could also be the the resistance badge on roller, of course. Like that could happen. Um. There's a lot. There's a lot of different things, right? That that could be the case here. Yes, definitely. And in this position right now, having this regnet almost down to at fifty percent, like this fire course is going nuts and doing a lot of damage. Yeah. So I think this might. This is just a kill, uh, or almost a kill if it goes under three point two percent. Wastewater takes down the coish. So if this scunch decides to attack the. Yeah, it does decide to attack the Ragnet here, and Ragnet goes down, and it's a one-for-one -one trade. Uh, I don't know if the Ragnet would have done a lot here in this matchup. Uh, it, it was just a save the Kino, right? Uh, actually, now that I look at it, Ragnet wouldn't have done too much. It would have been okay into the um, the Hedgein, but that's about that's about it, I think. Hedgein does come in, and Yalar gets sent in on the other side, and that is a very bulky board on the side of Setsuna. The Yalar and the Perrier Mashuk. The Perrier Mashuk still has the special defense buff, keep that in mind. Uh, it lost the defense buff due to the P jab earlier. But yeah, this is this is quite scary. Yeah, this is. I mean, as so far, this board looks pretty fine anyway. Uh, unfortunately, that Luke had to sacrifice the fire coins here. We could potentially see a Hellfire combo here, but uh, I mean, Hedgen is still a really strong tem in my opinion. I have really liking playing with this boy, with especially yeah, the I'm, meme trait. I I'm a I'm a big fan of Hedgen. I think um, I think it's a really good addition. Uh, as everyone that has watched me cast before, uh, all of you would probably know by now that I'm a big fan of Grumper and Drakash, and. Jarkash, I love Jarkash because clicking Hellfire is possibly one of the most satisfying things in the game. And well, not only is Hedgein a very cute Temtem, it also gets that Hellfire. And also, when it's getting into the Luma form, you can actually see some um, some ideas out of Sonic. You're right. That's that is a comparison that people are making. Uh, I'm not. I won't, uh, I won't accept that comparison, even though its trade is literally called Gotta Go Fast. Um, but yeah, I, I think that Hatchin can exert a lot of pressure here, even... I, I think you need it, because um, the Kinu has to die eventually too. You have Nidrasil that can Toxic Ink it as well, so Kinu does get pressured out quite a lot. Um, but... Setsuna just has this extremely bulky lineup. Like Volorant, Yaolar, Mashuk are so all three can be so incredibly bulky, and just Kinu 
multiplies that by so much. Oh yes, uh, but like Hedge needs to be. Uh, he he uh, Lou can't lo losing uh, Hedge too early because, like you said, that is really good with Mushok and Kino, and that's the two key temps that needs to be taken down. So yeah, the, he just went right for the damage onto the Mushuk with the plasma beam. Uh, Mushuk burned. Uh, it ox Mushuk taken down a notch. It took it quite well because of that special defense buff from earlier, and managed to retaliate with a um, with a P jab. And that is pretty relevant because this is a plus one Yowlar now that is ready to slam some Temtem. It's ready to throw out the Savage Suplex and the Yoshidashi. Yes. And I don't see a minus one Hedgein living a plus one Savage Suplex. But then again, what does? I mean, Nidrasil in general is pretty bulky, but if now Setsuna see whoever is coming in between the roller and Nidrasil, you have to choose between your two like strongest move of a bear. Yeah, uh, roller also has like pretty good defense, right? Nidrasil is quite bulky, so I guess you can tank it. Uh, but is there any? Is there ever a time where you are comfortable tanking a savage suplex from a plus one Yalor? Most of the time, you are really not. But at the same time, you have to also consider that okay, so. I probably need, like, for, for this point, I need Hedgein for later on. Oh, definitely. We need Hedgein, right? We need Hedgein to deal with Mashuk and everything. But actually, going for that for that Generify, right? For that uh, for that Synergy Generify. Seven Chuplex from Scrunch coming down onto the uh, onto the Yalar, taking down the 30% after the minus one defense buff. Uh, and if that's not a double in into the Hedgein, which it couldn't because Mashuk OX lost turn, so that... That Savage Suplex just got caught by a Generify, and this is the power of Agine, right? It went for that Synergy Generify. Uh, it's really good on a Fire Course squad, because for Fire Course you want to be running neutrals. So you go Hedgein, which is good with Fire Koish, but Hedgein is also good with neutrals because of the Synergy Generify. It gets the priority because we've got to go fast, and it blocked Yalor's strongest attack. So Yalor lost a hold on that attack. It lost like 70% almost of its HP because of the minus one defense Savage Suplex, and it will die pretty quickly now. Yes, and I feel like and I, I am an hedging user, and I'm forgetting about the uh, genifying. It's, uh, I, I think I, I should put my hedging back to the box, but like, I'm not playing this one for, for a day or two because I forget one of the most important moves for it. <laughs> yeah, it... um. It's not all aggro what Hedgeino has. It's it's very good. It had the Generify being one of the major things, of course, that is useful. Now, so, oh, the two that actually, if we look at that uh, that item, uh, is that the Aloe Vera that Hedgeino is wearing? That is a aloe vera, actually. That did quite a lot of damage to the Mushuk so, two times. Yeah, ago. that actually. That helps with taking down Mashuk with the uh, with the plasma beam, and I didn't notice that earlier, but that's quite nice tech because Hajjan isn't isn't that dependent on gear, I'd assume. Uh, Satsuna goes for buffing the uh, move flank e or sorry, buffing the uh, Mashuk up even more. It tanks the plasma beam quite well. Ninja Jutsu coming down onto the Kinu. Kinu resists it, so we'll take it rather well. It's not the bulkiest Temtem, but it takes it rather okay. And another peach up onto the hedge iron, and those minus defense buffs start to st stack up. Like it, it took quite a bit of damage from a burned P jab. Yes, but now the time is more for me taking for Setsuna because the Mushok is getting to the, a dangerous spot where he potentially can die this turn, or Kina can also die because of the Hellfire. Jowler could oh, be burned. Yeah, there, there, there's like. No one want to take on Hellfire, and then Hellfire is most likely coming this turn. So I don't think Mashuk will die to the Hellfire, actually, because of plus two special defense. Uh, Kinu most likely will die to it. So he'll ha or, uh, Setsu or Luke will have to choose between maybe Plasma Beaming the Mashuk again and leaving the Kinu. I think that's fine. What does uh, Kinu can Beta Burst or Skunch, which is quite scary, uh, but instead Kinu gets swapped out because, well, it doesn't want to get Hellfired back into that 
rather low Yowlar. Skunch also gets swapped out in fearing the beta burst. Goes into Rolder, so maybe not expecting the beta burst here, but there's that Hellfire we talked about. Will it kill the Mashuk here? And as I said, it didn't kill it. P-Jab coming down onto Hedgeye, that's minus three now, and well, 50%, Mashuk dying to the OX after that Hellfire damage, and this Yowlar is looking pretty, pretty roughed up. 11%, it didn't really do anything. Like, what is this gonna do? It buffs it up, and then... This is Inu a... Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. Just... Kinu can come in because Hellfire's down. And also that Hedgen is roughly close to getting overexerted, but I mean, yeah, I think exactly. Hedgen can take a overexertion at this point. Oh, what is this? It's gonna be the sacrifice. Will... Actually, will it be the greedy... Uh... The greedy, greedy hibernate? No, it's gonna be the the big OX with the fire tornado, and that will definitely take out that buffed up Yalar. Plus three, plus three, it still dies. More than 11% from that fire tornado. It's the big OX, but that's worth it. Oh no, the roller that tried to do the goring, rip your stamina. Yeah, rip the goring, but it doesn't matter. It's just a Volorant versus the world, and a Volorant is not going to win it against 4 Tam Tam, even though it has a good matchup against Nidrasil. Um, it won't be able to survive a Skunch and a Roller. Oh, no. no not, not, not on this planet. And if Hedgen has been able to rest in two turns, it, Volorant won't survive that either. It is... Uh, it... It's looking very dire for Setsuna here. It, it needs to be some sort of a magic coming out of nowhere for um, Setsuna to take this home. So yeah, it's this, it's Feather Gatling and Aerobic doesn't proc, so it is that anaerobic. Uh, it, it is the anaerobic Volorand. So yeah, um, I was expecting that Sasuna is running a rather bulky team. And we see actually that on paper right now. This is a like full bulky team. And Sasuna just patting on the shoulder. Nope, I'm out of here. And Voila. Luke Leal takes game one here. With, uh, yeah, with a pretty convincing victory here. A very um, synergistic squad between the Fire Koish, the Hedgeine, the Double Neutrals. Uh, I, I like this quad a lot. I think it, it looks very good. Oh yeah, I d definitely liking uh, Luke's uh, uh, lineup here. The, it looks so fine. Even the sword they have, like we have said now a few times, that it's so bulky. So it, if Luke had got any any attempts differently, like it wouldn't be possible to getting through that bulk. But but Luke yeah, really that headline. The Hedgeine and the Koish specifically did a number on that team, and even though the Koish was traded rather early, it did take out that Ragnad. As we're waiting right we're... now for... To, yeah, uh... as we're waiting for turn two or for game two, uh, what will Setsuna have to do differently to take the game two, possibly? I mean... Um... Maybe, maybe that uh, there, there are like so many attempts that it is a it is a problem for um, Setsuna, so the, he, he needs to find a way. But they are actually back into the game here. All right, then we'll jump right into it and see what what got changed up here. So we do see the Calabis, and this time Kino being banned from each of their side here. So. The Calvis were in the first ban here. Kino went through the, the last matchup here. So Luke is not in, any interesting at all to fighting against another Kino. So left oh, open. But, oh, but no. The Kino ban means that Naga is open. And that means that Naga right now is open. And right now can go for the Electro Punch. So you kind of have to pick the... Um... The Nidrasil here, I think, because then you don't have a, the glaring weakness to that Electro Punch. Electro Punch will do a number on Zobian, Koish, uh, onto the uh, the Hedgeine even. So I think you kind of want to grab that because otherwise it's going to be really rough to deal with Naga. 
Naga is good until that roller, even though roller is rather slow, so it will be able to get those stone balls off early. Uh, which makes me a little bit less of a fan for the, uh, of the Ragnat, because Ragnat will not appreciate a stone ball. Yeah, I think that that beta burst from uh, from Naga and just overall with how strong Naga is, it's 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 a very good pickup for Setsuna here. And we do see actually that Nidrasil being picked up here, as you said said earlier that we really needed to making sure that uh, this Naga it doesn't feel comfortable here on on the board here. So, what would we see that could be potentially bad? And, and of it's course, the Hedgine, yeah. The I wanted hedgine. to say I think I I would have liked to see a fire ban here, um, as they've. It did a lot. It's granted though, it's less good because you actually have the Naga now. And Naga is quite good into fire, so it's less good than it was before the ban. It's still solid. So uh, yeah, I like the Hedgehine ban. It, uh, it it was just rough to deal with, especially after that Generify lost game. And, right um, now, and in the previous match, the token got banned as well. I don't know if you have to ban the token here, um, or if, if Luke Liu will go for the token ban again. Uh, it's the Volorant ban, actually, so shake, like completely shaking it up and uh, banning out that, that bird. Yeah, and in no hesitation, picking up the fire coach immediately. And we do see that Setsuna's picking up both... Uh... Uh, Mashok and Nidrasil here. Just oh, and we get to board. see the Zaobian game. Oh, I'm really excited for this. I love Zaobian, uh, and it's I'm I'm very curious to see what it can do in the hands of a player like Luke Lille. So, uh, yeah, it uh, generally um, Zaobian runs it, the heat up and like three attacking moves. Right, it it gets access to stab on any move, which is really solid. You can play around with your typings a lot. But we get into the game and we see the Ragnet Naga opener versus Roller Nidrasil. What is your take on this on this board? Okay, so my take on the board here, first of all, is like you almost have a counter towards everyone here on the board. But I'm thinking that personally, I think in Nidrasil and Roller is a slightly better startup, even though that Naga can power counter pretty well against Roller. But Roller Stone Ball is such a huge advantage in this position with this. Uh, this decent hour. Decent hour. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're right. It is pretty rough to see that Ragnar, they won't be able to do anything because I don't think Ragnar generally runs a, a good, like, other move except for Electro Punch turn one, right? I don't think it has access to a lot of different kind of moves in general. In general, well, it could P jab, potentially. It can P jab, it can actually deal with, like, Hypno, but I mean, most of them are prior two and not prior one. Yeah. So, well, it got swapped out. Mishu gets sent in, probably tanking that stone ball, and we saw Parrier, so, hey, that's only 20%. That's pretty good coming from that roller. Uh, or he tanks it pretty well. Madness buff coming out from Naga, and that is, uh, that's a pretty greedy play because it will tank a, a toxic hit now, a toxic ink down to 13.3%, reactive file proccing back up to almost 30, and then down to almost 15 so um, if that were able to getting a, like additional f at least three percent or maybe four percent, that would have been such a devastating this move out of um, Setsuna here. Yeah, it is. Um, this Naga is almost dead, and it will most likely be dead soon. It will at least get another move off right here, which is good. Um, it, it, it's it's sad, but uh, yeah, seeing a Naga fall. Satsuna had to go for a risky play, and staying in against a Toxic Ink is pretty risky. Naga, well, will take, or yeah, Stone Ball will go into Naga, and that will easily take it out. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't resist it anymore because of that reactive vial, Hypnosis coming out, making use of the, the Deceit Aura. Hypnosis onto the Mashuk, Mashuk falling asleep, and this is rough. That's such a good opener for Luke Leo. Yeah, already like two turns in, already losing a term. Muchuk is already have fallen asleep. Even though Nitrosin is coming out here, what is this Nitrosin can do right now? I mean, okay, Roller is already out of stamina, so that would open up a, a little bit. That okay, so I probably can either using Spore or Tink on that position because mostly of the times who is in the back line doesn't like, especially doesn't like uh, the Tink. 
I mean, Cyber can resist this pretty well, but you're still getting the, the ticks, and you don't want to lose like 25% oh, that quickly. That is not true, actually, because Zobian can waste water and make itself a toxic type. Yes, that's true. But if you swap in Sabio, you oh, are not. Oh, if you not. swap into it, you're gonna take. Yeah, if you swap into it, you're gonna take the, the hits. Yes, but I think I... if it were a one v one situation, Zobian would be okay there. Uh, you, you you just get rid of that those uh, those poison ticks like entirely. Oh yeah, definitely. If they're facing one one v one, that I'm don't doubt, doubting that Sabio would be a, a much better position. But if there's gonna be swapping in, uh, which is happening right now. I'm a little bit afraid that toxic uh, it, it does think it's gonna be a landing there. Oh, and this is uh, this is slightly unfortunate. Um, Nidorsil went after Mashuk, so it woke it up. It gave it the regen because of the spores and the tripothecary. Uh, but Mashuk went first, so yeah, no move for Mashuk. But hey, at least your Mashuk is being healed now. But now this Zobian is in and ready to go. Right, it has its hold up. It can. I'm expecting something along the lines of heat up, uh, wastewater, electro punch, and like turbo attack. Yeah, and also that I don't see very often a Sabio having the drum war. Oh, it it actually has those drums. Yeah, that that is that's nice. Second, it busts itself. It busts the uh, the Nidrasil. We see a a spores coming out onto Zaobian, so it is. Also a 3 regen onto the Zobian, who goes for the heat up. And which makes him resist the allergic spread now. So the the regen and the toxic kind of uh, balancing each other out. But taking way less damage due to the resist. Because, well, Zobian transformed into a fire type. And this is a plus 2 Zobian now. Uh, just plus 1, because the, the Mushuk did actually a tenderness. So it's only he, plus 1. You're right, you're right. He tenderness, so it's a plus one attack and this is a re another reason i still like the parry or mashuk you have uh, or mashuk in general uh tenderness is still a good move tendernessing yaular koi sobian skunch they're, they're they're all good targets for it yeah so like mashuk in, in general is like you're having such a good like uh, sets of move like you can run in depending on like tenderness we saw now where you can run cage uppercut p jab you're having waste border like there are such fine movesets in Shmashuk, so you can play it tiny bit differently depending how you re really want it. And especially, this tenderness is really going to be huge for Setsuna if he can put it off, for example, on Koish or get it on Skun, so they can't do any hard damage. Yeah, or on this or on this Zobian, as happened, right? A, a plus two heat up is really scary, um, but it going up down to plus one or being plus one rather than plus two, that's at least okay uh, it's not as bad for you as this before the koish gets swapped in pj comes out so that's also minus one defense now for zobian zobian goes for the turbo attack for that big digital move onto the mashuk and look at the damage oh. mashuk dies that's a parrier mashuk and oh my lord uh one thing to note here it is a plus one uh war drums zobian and because it clicked turbo attack, it didn't have a second typing. And Mashuk was carrying a double screen. So double screen was not active there, which is slightly unfortunate for the Mashuk. But uh, it died to a turbo attack. And how often do you see a Mashuk almost get O-code by a physical attack? A parrier Mashuk, that is. There's not very often. So Sabion play there with the turbo attack were excellent. I There's no words I can describe it, how actually good that particular turn was. Yeah, the, the Ragnar does manage to come in here, and Ragnar is okay here, right? There is, um, um, it, it, the Electro Punch will do massive damage to Zaobian and Koish. And Luke Leal sees that as well, obviously swaps in the Nidrasil because it will eat that, uh, that Electro Punch for dinner. Zaobian goes for the Wastewater and almost does 50%, 45 or 45%, but after the um, after the toxic hit, uh, proc, it will go down to like 40 something percent. Electro Punch hitting the Ninja Seal for almost no damage. Taser burns it. Pretty irrelevant though. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fine to getting off that 6%, even though, but the, the burn is even better if you've been able to find a, a position where you can 
reduce the burn efficiency by reducing the 30% damage, which I still think the burn itself is such an underrated status condition. I kind of like it more and more the, the more I see how you, if you've been able to play it really well and working around it, it's... I, I it's like so it. strong. It's so strong, especially with moves like Hellfire, or if you go slow moves with Naga, it's extremely strong. And if we look at the health of this uh, of this Ragnad, um, it will actually die to another Wastewater, but I think Zobi and OX, so no Wastewater here possible, so this Zob or this Ragnad will most likely live to see another day. And it will have the charged iron fillings up at this point. We do see actually rollers coming in here. Maybe it's gonna be another um, attacking move here. We do see the torp attack coming out there? Is that enough to take it oh, out? It didn't know access. It, uh, it didn't know access. It was exactly, and this will be enough to take out the Ragnar. I, I have to swallow my words there. The, it will have a big OX here, but it was pretty much perfect uh, stamina then, I think. Yowler comes in, still full health Yowler, but Yowler generally only has show off to click turn one and. As good as Yowler is, this is it's one one small downside, and that if is if you send it in late, it has to show off turn one, and you're basically giving up a uh, one turn. Spores comes down onto the ruler, little bit of damage, but more importantly, three turns of toxic. Show off comes down, as I said, no other t moves or turn one moves for this Yowler. Stoneball comes out, synergy Stoneball. Keep in mind, so another really good synergy with Fire Koish. You get the Synergy Master, Synergy Stoneball, which also burns. So now this plus one Yowler got burned, and that will cut its attack, and it will do less damage if it survives here. Uh, Cat's uh, doing ma massive damage. Goring coming out, will it die? It doesn't die. One HP. That's one Ooh. HP. It will die to the burn, but it will at least get one move off here. We'll be able to take something out. Oshidashi onto the roller. That's a burn. That's burned, so it doesn't even take it out, and... That's pretty much game, right? Well, it has been game, but we know it for sure now. Yeah, definitely it's for sure now. Even a couple of turns ago that the Bark Shield were needed for um, Mershuk, but wasn't able to pull it off in time. As you can see, the Quetz is doing over 50%. Can Roller finish this off, or will it be another turn? It is the Stone Ball, and that won't kill it. It will burn it for two turns. Roller dies due to OXing. It's a little, that's a little bit unfortunate, but it doesn't matter anymore. It's just a matter of sending in, uh, sending in Skunch here and just clicking Katza again. If you're losing one pair of Katza, you can just get in another one, but... Set to the scene, this is over. Well played to both competitors there. Yeah, well played, but Luke Leal with a convincing win. Um, but yeah, good games. Yes. And we will we will be seeing one more Luke Liu game later today. His team Luke, his team has a little bit of spice on it, right? It, it's pretty juicy. It has that uh, that roller. Uh, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. It has very cool synergies between roller and uh, and Koish, and then there is the um, the Hedgeine, the Skunch. It it it's just all around looks like a very solid squad, and uh, I am looking forward to seeing more of it later against Suckley. Oh yeah, so we're gonna have the Suckling match, which will be happening in, uh, if if I see the time here, it should be in uh, 1 hour and 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Need just uh, to double check. No, two, it, it, should, be two it should be two and a half hours. I yes, two think. and a half. You're it should correct. be two time slots, so it should be in two and a half hours. Uh, we'll be back off the last match of the week, uh, Luke Liu versus Suckling. Uh, please tune in again, and as always, thanks people for uh, tuning in to... Uh, into this match, uh, listening to JT and me ramble on about Tim Tam plays. Yeah, exactly. And we we'll, we'll see you guys in roughly two and a half hour. Don't don't miss the last match before we get into the next week into the week, and where we will see actually the top eight. And I'm believing also, if I'm not mistaken, before we ending here, that somewhere in the beginning of the next week we will see. Uh, the seeds have been streamed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I don't dare to comment on this. I think so, um, but we'll uh, we'll have to wait for confirmation from Tylo himself for that. Uh, anyways, keep an eye on um, the tempting Twitter. Keep an eye on the Discord if you're in there. 
And um, well, if we have more information, we'll be sure to mention it later uh, during the Luke Liu versus Suckley side. Um, thanks everyone. Thanks Tylo and Tem Team for hosting this tournament. And thanks JT for accompanying me on this cast. Yeah, thank you as well for being a good friend and casting with me here. We will see you guys roughly over two hours here. So take care and tempt him up. Bye-bye.